Hey everyone, Alex DeValetti from Detroit Speed here, back again with a quick update for you. There is a vehicle that a lot of you have been asking about. It's our 1963 Chevy 2, and a lot of you are asking where it is, how come you haven't seen it lately. So today, I brought Kyle in and we're going to walk around the car, give you an update about it, and let you know our plans with the vehicle going forward. So, let me flip the camera around and we'll talk with Kyle about it. Kyle, everyone's been asking, where's the Chevy 2? So let's give them a quick update on it. You want to explain what happened to the vehicle? Yeah, you know, the patchwork of colors is not really our style. It's uh, in process again. So it was unfortunately crashed. You know, we were just talking about this, what, probably um, four, a little over four years ago now. The car mm -hmm. was crashed, unfortunately, and after it had been refreshed and um anyway that happens in the life of cars and the world of what we do exactly developing and, and doing everything we do with cars but um was always one of my favorite cars still is it was my go-to on a get out and run on a sunday in the back roads and just clear the mind this is my this was my yeah, this is the so one i'm anxious to get it back and you know the car did a the history of the car for us at detroit speed did a lot for us from the development of our chevy 2 program mm -hmm. the front frame the, the mini tubs the subframe connectors the four link on and on and on this was the the car but you know what most of you may not know was even before our car you know this car used as a development car for detroit speed this was a hot rod magazine project car so okay um, back i didn't even know of, that i had no idea yeah back in the days of will hansel the car came from um, Southern California. It was Will's personal car when he worked at Hot Rod. Okay. And um, yeah, so the car was used for many updates. I've got magazine article after magazine article of putting a Kenwood cassette deck uh, <laughs> into this car as, a, as an audio feature and different things along the way. So the car came to us as a basket case, yep. um, like a lot of Project Magazine cars are, but uh, was painted. So we, we ro rolled with the uh, Seafoam Green, which is original on a 63 Chevy 2. It was just a a cool color and we matched the interior to be that way and mm -hmm. um anyway it served its purpose for us for gosh a lot of years from california we out across it to all over road trips all over the country and it was our go-to for a while and like i said once it was crashed we thought you know we'll make it better uh, a friend of mine good friend of mine up in michigan ben um, helped me source a lot of the nos sheet metal so all the sheet metal you see on the car is either gm original or uh, GM new old stock um, down to the fenders, door skins, um, quarter panel, core support. I mean, just as much as you could possibly source. Any, anything yep. we could find. Ben found he, he found a, a lot of parts that I'm surprised still turned up. But uh, thanks to Ben and helping me get the car straightened out, the floor pan and the, and the toe pan was tweaked a little bit from the wreck. So. Um, put a new clip on it from us and um, back to a roller. So I'm excited now to start mocking up the drive line again. We'll go back with the, the mast um, LS7 back in it. It was always a strong engine, um, ran easy, uh, easy to drive, good fuel economy and mm -hmm. tons of power for this car. Um, but I'm gonna go back this time with a six speed in it. So we'll go to Boulder and get a get a six speed going for it. Yeah, have that highway cruising in. gear. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was always good, but Many times after being in our other cars, you always kind of go for that. <laughs> yeah, you try and find six gear and it it's just not there. It wasn't there. Yeah, and I know the, the LS7 in this car, I mean, mass black label, it was the, so what's that, 550, this one 600? Was a little more, it was a little over 600. And um, it was one of the early, early kind of prototypes for Horace and guys down at Mast on the black label engine. So mm -hmm. um, just a, a jewel of an engine and, and always ran well. So it's been freshened and, and ready to go back again. Yeah, and I know this has our mini tubs in it, but the maximum you can fit on the early cars, and I think even the late ones, was a 295. You, you can, yeah. So and not a whole lot of tire out back. So I know, at least my experience with this car, is the most fun to drive just because there's so much power and so little tire. It was, so, you know, it surprised a lot of people. It looked like grandma's car pulling up after church, but um, could embarrass a few people too on the road course or the autocross. So anxious to put it back together. And you're right, it was always kept you on your toes because mm -hmm. it was a... We, we, we ran a 275, 285 on the car a lot. Um, so hoping we can get a 295 match on the back of it now. And um, you know, on the, the 66, 67 Chevy 2s, 
we can comfortably get a 315 on the yep. back, which is a really nice look and a nice fit for the car. But on the on the early cars, it was just something the quarter panels aren't quite as wide, and um, 295 is about all you can get. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the color? I know you know I've always been a fan of the the seafoam green on it, and you know how it kind of has that that unassuming look. You wouldn't expect anything of it. Now, I remember back in I think it was two years ago at Columbus. There was a black with red interior, early Chevy 2 that pulled into the show, and you told me I had to find that car and get you photos. So is that the color you're planning on going with? It is. You know, I, I love the seafoam green and served us well, and the interior matched. Uh, it was a neat combination, but I am. When we go back together now, it'll be a be gloss black, one of my favorite colors. Um, gray, black, <laughs> yep. and chrome is, is good with me. But yeah, it'll be black on the outside and a red interior. I've always, when I've seen Chevy 2s, especially the early ones, um, that combination, I love it. So time to put ours back together like that. Yep, that'll be awesome. Black is like your favorite color. It is. I think Bobby. Other than blue, even off on me and uh, Bobby Alvey always said it's a good shade when it's black. So, <laughs> yep. Um, See, I think you no know, black will look amazing, especially with you know red interior and everything red. Yep. So it'll look it'll look really really cool. Now I'm anxious to get together. So kind of the next steps from here, since sheet metal is intact, we are going to put a lower section on this quarter panel, not because it was damaged, but just from um, just some bubbles starting to come through in the quarter okay. panel from years and years ago where the car came from I'm sure on the west coast and um, kind of a quickie paint job that was on it before we received it right um, it's time to go ahead and get that right but otherwise like I said all GM or GM new old stock sheet metal in the car we'll do this section um, see if we need to open up the tunnel for the six speed compared, mm -hmm. compared to what we had with the five speed right mock up the drive line again and um, probably get it to the blaster and start going back together after that but I'm you know at the same time you never want to crash your car and I've missed it for several years but it's going to allow us to make the car better yep. um, make yeah yeah better fit for what we do and um, you know also it was somewhat dated with the electronics that were in it mm -hmm. so we can update it with a Holly Dominator ECM and a new harness and some of the the comforts that we're building into the customer cars these days too. right and i think a good example of you know it served us well for many years and then now that you have an opportunity to redo it it's almost like the third gen you know we did the same thing you know the, there was an unfortunate accident with the first car right. but it gave us an opportunity to do it better and make it right so i'm excited to see you know phase two the, the resurrection of this car so it'd be really cool but um are there any other plans with it? Anything else that you want to change? I know we're updating the, the six speed Holly Dominator. Is there anything else? Yeah, you know, this car never had an audio system in it. And okay. I don't know if it's me or just going back to the, I go to this car for the, the Sunday getaway cruises and clear the mind. I want to put a nice stereo system in it. Um, but otherwise, it'll be our uh, back to like what it was for us suspension wise. Mm -hmm. Driveline will be similar except for the transmission. Um, updated wiring, electronics, and a, and a cool uh, audio system. And anxious to go get it back on the road. That'll be cool. Let's uh, pop the hood too and see. We had to replace the front frame in there as well. Yeah, so it's got one of our new, uh, you know, bolt-on front clips for the Chevy too, and it really, literally is bolt-on. You can see where it connects back to mm -hmm. the tow pan area on the four bolt flange. And um, we stamped the inner fender, so it's a Detroit stamped inner fender that we did. And we did that, um, you know, a lot of the Chevy 2s you see from drag race cars to the aftermarket front clips just had a, a plain aluminum panel in here or maybe a steel panel with some bead rolls in it. And that served a purpose when I think that was the look, you know, when somebody wanted to make the car look like it was modified. But right. to me, I've always been that. How would GM or Chevrolet do it if, if they could yeah. now? And um, not that we always have the funds to do that, but to me it was important to get that stock appearing GM look with a stamped inner fender. And the shape of this has a, a bay bar that connects to the front frame, back to the um, inner fender and cowl support area to really stiffen up the front clip. And that's all hidden behind the, the inner fender that's yeah, stamped. You'd have no idea it's there. Right, yeah, you, have, you literally have to look from underneath. But um, it's a nice quality piece. Mm -hmm. Um, we make the flanges where there'll be a bolt on, you know, whether it's an early car or a late car because the, mm -hmm. the inner fenders are the same, but the flanges and the hood hinge mounts are different between okay. the early cars and the late Chevy 2s. Perfect. So, and we actually have a, a really good video talking about the stamp products that we offer and the Chevy 2 front frame as well. So I'll be sure to link those in here as well so you guys can check those out, get a little more technical information about suspension geometry and then, you know, the reasoning behind 
doing stamp products and what they're made from and how we manufacture them as well so that'd be really cool yeah no it'll be good we'll uh, like i said it'll be fun to kind of mock it back up and get the car to the blaster and get it down to bare metal and come back together it'll be a fun yeah. project for me that i want to um, be able to spend some time on and get it back together yeah, exactly so i think that's uh that's about it thank you guys for checking out this video um if you like videos like this make sure you hit the subscribe button and you give this video a thumbs up that helps us out to make sure that you guys are seeing our videos as we upload them as well so thank you kyle for giving us a rundown on the chevy too and we'll be sure to update you guys as kyle gets to updating this project and moving forward and um we're looking forward to seeing the next steps. Yeah, thanks for joining Awesome. In. Thanks, guys.